Hello, I am with uh, Rafa Ohm uh, in the context of the Neuromarketing World Forum in Barcelona. Uh, Rafa, thank you very much for uh, giving us your time um, uh, to talk about neuromarketing, to have this conversation about neuromarketing. Let's it's start. a pleasure to be here and finally we have a beautiful sun. <laughs> I'm so happy that I'm in Barcelona. <laughs> this is my first day. I mean, I'm, I'm here the third day, but this is the first real day in Barcelona with the sun. With the sun, because of the sun. Okay, yes. <laughs> good. Um, Rafa, starting with the, with the basics, uh, what is neuromarketing? Neuromarketing is the new discipline that helps people understand better the emotions of the clients, the consumers, and eventually people. Because uh, emotions so far have been studied by paper and pencil questionnaires or by interviews. And there's nothing wrong with paper and pencil questionnaires and interviews except for the one thing. Whenever we talk about emotions, these are not true emotions or pure emotions anymore. Because when we have to articulate them with an abstract sounds that are commonly called words, we automatically start or ignite uh, special filters that uh, change our um, streaming. For instance, one filter could be filter of being politically correct. Okay. See, You cannot tell all the things that you would love to tell because it's politically not proper. The other one is filter of intimacy. Yeah. I am too shy to say something. The other one is that I would love to share my emotions, but I cannot articulate them because it's so difficult to name my emotions. Yeah. So when you use neuromarketing tools, most of them are nonverbal tools. Yeah. You don't have to talk. They talk with the organism. Yeah. See, they see how brain or peripheral nervous system uh, sends impulses and then they decode them into meaningful um, insights. Good, good. Um, so, if I understand well, uh, neuromarketing is about to deeply study emotion, right. uh, avoiding words, avoiding verbal uh, interaction. Yes, yes. It, it does not mean that we avoid uh, words uh, in a sense. It means that we uh, test and focus not only on words, but also on nonverbal signals that okay. are sent from the body. So we have both. Both. Okay, good. Uh, Rafa, what are the complexities of neuromarketing? <laughs> well, um, initially, the biggest issue was the machines. Uh -huh. See, the cost of machines, the complexity of machines, and uh, today uh, the cost of most machines um, is, uh, has been dramatically reduced. Yeah. For instance, uh, the first EEG that I have purchased in 2004 was more than 50,000 euros. Today, I have a EEG that is 1,000 euros. And it, 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 the quality of this 1,000 euro EG is 80%. So it's not as good as the 50,000 uh -huh. euro, but still 80% makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so it's not about the machines, it's about the people who interpret the findings. Okay. So, so we are in the world of similar to, to the world of physicians, medical physicians. See, we use our machines as they use x-ray machines or as they use tomographs, see? They, they have powerful uh, laboratories, they studied um, their patient's health, but at the end of the day, it is the doctor who sits, look at the results, look at the, at the clinical test, and, and they have to make the decision how to treat the patient. So, so this is the moment that we should mostly focus on training people how to interpret how to diagnose and how to recommend. Good, good. Um, what is the way to measure neuromarketing projects? Is there a kind of ROI, return of investment? Uh... Well, this would be uh, one of the very good um, um, possibilities. However, it takes two to tango. Uh, to get the ROI, you need to have the client who is ready to reveal all sales information. Yeah. Moreover, in marketing business, 
uh, it is very difficult to decide whether the sales was directly caused by the single ad or maybe it was caused not only by the ad but also by the price, by the distribution or maybe it was caused by the very bad ad uh, of your competitor. Mm. There are plenty of uh, various um, um, uh, elements. So, so the first reason why we don't have uh, such a strong, um, solid um, um, data that we could um, put against our findings is the, um, the discretion and confidentiality mm -hmm. of many um, um, sales figures. And second of all, even if we are um, provided with such uh, numbers, we would still have difficulties. So we're doing, uh, we're working hard, um, uh, but uh, it's way more complex than many people think. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, um, some methodological point uh, about the sample. Uh, how big should it be uh, a sample in a neuromarketing study and uh, what about the re representativity of the sample because I have heard, I have read somewhere that uh, if you do a study in Sao Paulo, Brazil, you can extrapolate it to the UK or Norway. Hmm. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, yeah, this comes in the way of the second part of the, the representativity of the of the sample. See the, uh, the size. It depends. It depends what you're testing. If you're testing um, most universal. Um, messages. Um, I think uh, people um, are quite uh, similar. But uh, it is very difficult to come up with the very universal um, message that would be evenly uh, recepted by people in the West and in the East um, of our world uh, that would be evenly appreciated by older and, and younger. However, um, we've been doing many of cross-cultural tests and mm -hmm. there were some tests that were almost um, perfect when it comes to uh, universality. Okay. These were Microsoft ads. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft is a, is a global player. Yeah. They have to have uh, b b b global uh, messaging and they were doing uh, very, very well on it. Um, when it comes to the sample size, um, um, we uh, we we try to 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 to, to have uh, in our uh, brainwave research we try to have um, 44 or 66 um, uh, respondents per cell. If a subject is a very controversial, 66. It's, if, it's, if it's less controversial, um, it's 44 per cell. Um, so if you want to see uh, older and younger, it has to be 88. For yeah. instance. Uh, with reaction time implicit methodology, we uh, have uh, 160 respondents, mm. but this is online, so it's much easier to get yeah. them. Uh, I know that um, our friends from Nielsen uh, are about to publish a uh, article. Um, they did um, academic uh, study on the sample size with uh, EEG research, and they uh, discovered that uh, you don't need to have um, such a huge sample size as with the traditional um, tests. Yeah. So I think that maybe this article will bring some um, standards to the society. Uh, and the final uh, thing, um, it is very, it is, it is, it, it would be um, too uh, risky. To, to claim that uh, that brains and hearts of people living in Sao Paulo have the same um, 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 have the same um, uh, reactions to the ad that brains and, and hearts of people uh, living in the UK mm -hmm. see because because uh, because again it could be um, uh, it could be true for Microsoft yeah. ad but for beer ad no. For cosmetic ad, no. You need to see your own people oh. in the in the ad. Okay, good. Um, anything is perfect. Neuromarketing is not an exception. What are the limitations of neuromarketing? Well, 
uh, but we are not perfect, uh, just like the map of Christopher Columbus was uh -huh. not perfect. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you see the map with which he was uh, traveling to India, yeah. and eventually he ended up in, 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 in North America, America, not even knowing that. See? So, so the thing is that if, uh, even if it's not perfect, the direction is good. So, uh -huh. so we are moving forward. I, I have my speeches uh, uh, from 10 years ago. And, and I see that uh, many of the things um, were, were um, too, um, too uh, risky. Mm -hmm. And probably my today's speech, if I see in 2025, I would say, oh, Rafael, you are so romantic. It's not as easy. See, <laughs> I don't care. Okay. The direction is good. Yeah. We know that we'll bring the new value. Okay. Uh, that we will bring new um, insights. We know that we don't want to replace existing methodologies yeah. because they're good, they're very good. Like, 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 like the interview with the patient, doctors talk to their patients. Yeah. But on the top of this, they administer clinical tests. So we neuro people are clinical tests. Okay. And traditional people are interview with, 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 uh, with the patient. So in order to be a good doctor, you need to have both. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um. Next, next thing. Uh, nowadays, we the human beings are living in, in, a, in a world that the accessibility to knowledge is the biggest and the best ever in our human beings' True. history. So, uh, the, the access to knowledge is either very cheap or even free. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, the neurotechnologies, all the machines that we use in neuromarketing are uh, costing less and less, as mm -hmm. they're dropping the price, yeah. as you 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 you, you said. Yeah. So this is a context where some people that I have met, I have listened, are claiming that uh, they're doing neuromarketing because so, some at some point you can read a couple of books in neuromarketing and somehow you can have access to eye tracker, yeah. eye tracking, and this kind of technologies. What are the aspects? that uh, we, we should identify to uh, choose a good neuromarketer or the good aspect that we should have to become good neuromarketers? Well, um, now I, 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 I will speak not as a, as a founder of a, of a neuro company, uh -huh. but I will speak as a, as a board member of the society. Yeah. Um, we uh, are very um, enthusiastic about the boom on creating neuromarketing companies mm -hmm. uh, in the last years. See, there used to be um, five neuro companies uh, 10 years ago, see, uh, and today we have 200, 300, 500, see, and you're absolutely right. You can, you can, you can get neuro equipment for $200. Uh, to play uh, some computer games, and you can um, think this is neuromarketing. Um, what we are planning to do, we do and we don't want to stop it. Yeah. See? I mean, we encourage people to, 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 to create startups as much as they can, because some of the startups will be the future apples and windows of uh, our community. Yeah. However, we want to show them the standards that they have to, um, uh, to, 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 to get to the standards. Yeah. So therefore, uh, our uh, association have created the accreditation procedure um, that helps you um, describe your methodology and decide whether your methodology uh, is congruent with our standards or not yet. Mm -hmm. And if not, we'll give you the information what should you do Mm -hmm. To make it better, to improve it. Mm -hmm. So this is so this is like the like the um, um, accreditation criteria yeah. uh, that would be extremely helpful for um, owners of uh, research agencies because they know how much more they need to work yeah. to get the credit, mm -hmm. or they will see, hey, we are already on a good track. We've been accredited. Okay. And this is also a very good indicator for clients. Yeah. See, right. because clients today uh, may decide uh, who to select yeah. uh, on their uh, um, intuitive uh, b b b um, uh, level. Yeah. Um, in the future, they can simply ask, "Hey, uh, are you a certified uh, neuromarketer?" 
Yeah. And if not, um, try um, get the certification and come back. Uh, well, that's good. That's a good, good initiative. Any preliminary ideas that you have been discussing or these standards that you can share in this moment with us? Or well, these standards uh, are about to be released any month from now. Okay. We have we had the board meeting uh, two days ago, yeah. and we agreed on the final um, version of the accreditation okay. um, um, paper. Yeah. We presented this to all members um, the day before, mm -hmm. and uh, in the coming weeks we will send it okay. uh, to all the people. We will establish the the. Um, uh, independent uh, committee yeah. uh, that has no economic uh, or commercial involvement with neuromarketing okay. to judge and to evaluate uh, all the candidates okay. and uh, this would be a huge uh, step forward. The first yeah. step forward that we've made as an association was two years ago when we established the code of ethics. Okay. See? So this was the, the most important thing for us to, 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 to have NMS being NMSBA members accept code of ethics okay. so that we all go by the same rules and it was very inclusive um, okay. uh, criteria you you just have to accept the code of ethics yeah uh, and today we are introducing the second level which is very exclusive because okay. you have to work very hard on your tools yeah. on your methodology and on your interpretation to get the accreditation okay uh, but this is the next step, and this would be a, a huge uh, b b b thing for, for us. Um, we are already um, inclusive, yeah. and to, from today on, we're becoming uh, exclusive. Yeah. And it's up to you to decide whether you want to uh, be uh, on the first level or whether you inspire to the second level. Okay, I see. Good. Uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be waiting for that. Uh, that will be very interesting. Next thing. Uh, Rafa, in management, in the last 30, 40 years, we have uh, seen fashions, we, sh we have seen trends such as total quality management, su such as reengineering, such as Six Sigma. The question is, is neuromarketing another fashion, trendy uh, way to, manage, uh, uh, to do management, or neuromarketing is something you believe in, is here to stay? Um, well, I, I, I've just uh, written an article uh -huh. uh, about uh, how um, consumer neuroscience will influence um, management. Okay. Um, today we are mainly focusing on how neuromarketing will, will change marketing. Uh, but there are plenty of um, discoveries uh, made by neuroscientists that would give enormous information for managers. I'm referring mostly to the discovery of mirror neurons, yeah. which is something extremely new. It's been discovered uh, a decade ago mm. by, by, by uh, Italian professors. Yeah. Uh, mirror neurons are uh, those little part of the brain that helps you feel emotions of other people, yeah. not perceive, but feel. Uh -huh. See? So that when you look at the baby, at the, at, at, at the girl and she cries, your brain is crying with her yeah. and therefore you will help her yeah. much quicker yeah. when you see the guy who is funny and optimistic you load your batteries mm -hmm. with with energy and actually literally speaking you load your batteries you load your mirror neurons yeah. see so so for instance uh, b b b b the, the 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 leader in the company uh, he or she needs to be very uh, concerned about reading emotions okay. of their workers, about um, detecting relations. I'm talking right now about emotional intelligence. And the best way to uh, explore emotional intelligence is not paper and pencil things, yeah. but neural things, okay. because it's all about emotions. <laughs> See? So, so I, I predict that in the upcoming years, mm. there would be even stronger impact on business from our society, not only in marketing level, but also on managerial and organizational level. Okay, good. Um, Mirror neurons, remember this name. <laughs> It'll be the coolest thing you'll see. Okay, yeah, we're, we're taking note of that. Um, 
you, you're, you're talking a, a, a lot, you're mentioning a lot the word emotions. Uh, you're, you're stressing uh, and highlighting the importance. What's the way you define emotion? Emotion? Yeah. Emotion is something that gives you energy to act. Emotion tells you whether you should approach something or avoid something. Emotion uh, makes you stand up and go to work. Okay. Emotion makes you fight for your country. Emotion makes you fight for your family. Yeah. Emotion makes you work hard. See, um, there's uh, there's a uh, lots of uh, discussion on artificial intelligence, uh -huh. and some people are scared, like Stephen Hawking, uh, that computers will uh, will rule the world and we will be devastated, we humans. Uh, other guy says that that it's not so uh, it's not so threatening. Um, See, uh, to create artificial intelligence is not that difficult. Well, uh, 10 years ago, we created a computer that beats uh, b b b b b Gary Kasparov, uh -huh. uh, the, the best uh, chess player. Yeah. See? Uh, and so, so, so the computer is much smarter than man, but there is no computer that can create emotions. Okay. See, you cannot create the program, computer program, that make computer angry when you tell the computer, oh, you look tired today, you look ugly. And the computer will not be offended. See, there's no way you can create such a program. Why? Because all the programs are written in a binary code. Yeah. Zero, one. And emotions, you cannot present emotion in zero, one code. Yeah. You see, today, during my lecture, I showed the Meg Ryan uh, clip yeah. during which we experience at the same time two opposite emotions. We experience positive emotion and negative emotion at the same time. See? So it is as if we were walking, we were turning left and turning right at the same time. Mm -hmm. With with logical thinking, with binary programming, it is impossible. Uh -huh. With emotions, everything is possible. Okay. So yeah. there will be no way we can cre create in a foreseeable future artificial emotion, artificial intelligence, whatever. Artificial emotion, no way. We are safe. <laughs> Good. Uh, to finish, uh, Rafa, do you have something you would like to say to people who are interested in neuromarketing? Any free message do you would like to, to share with us? Of course. In the 21st century, um, when everything is discovered uh, when it comes to geography, when everything is created when it comes to music and art, there is still a land that is completely unexplored. We've been trying to travel to this land uh, for the last 10 years, but still we are not even in the middle of the road. So if you want to be a pirate, if you want to join us, please go ahead because we need you. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, Rafa, thank you very much thank uh, you. for sharing uh, your time and thank you so your much. knowledge. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.